Hi, teens! I am Alex, your librarian from Heroes Regional Park Library, and you are very welcome to Teen Story Time. During this magical time, the beginning of the year, I want to read you from this story, Little Chiefs by Margaret Owen. You probably know that Margaret Owen wrote Merciful Crow series already. We have um, the Merciful Crow book and the second part of the series, Faithless Hawk. You can check it out from your library. And today, Little Chiefs. And this book actually retelling old fairy tale written by Brothers Grimm, The Goose Girl. Let's start to read. Little Thieves Little Thieves by Margaret Owen To the Gremlin girls, I would like to tell you something inspiring. But the truth is, when life closes a door for us, it doesn't always open a window. The good news is, that's what bricks are for. Others note this is a story about many things, beautiful and ugly, painful and true. There are discussions of child abuse and neglect, navigating abusive environments and trauma from a past attempted assault. For many of us, these are wounds, and I have tried to give them ear here without tearing at the heart-worn stitches. Still, I trust you to know your scars. The little thief steals gold, but the great one steals kingdoms, and only one goes to the gallows. Almanic proverb. Part 1. The Curse of Gold. The first tale, Godmothers. And those are wonderful pictures inside the book, too. Once upon a time, on the coldest night of midwinter, in the darkest heart of the forest, death and fortune came to a crossroads. They stood tall and unfathomable in the glass smooth snow, death in her shroud of pure smoke and shadows, and fortune in her gown of gold and bones. More than that cannot be said, for no two souls see death and fortune the same way, yet we all know when we meet them. On this night, a woman had come to just that, meet them. Her dull carrot-colored curls twisted from under a woolen cap, her wind-burned red face as worn as the threadbare cloak over her shoulders. One hand clutched a dimming iron lantern which smoldered just bright enough to catch the snowflakes flitting by like fireflies before they melted back into the dark. Her other hand was locked around the wrecked meat of a little girl beside her. Please, the woman said, shivering in snow up to her shins. We are stretched in to feed the twelve other mouths already. And this one, she is ill luck. Wherever she goes, the milk spoils, the wool tangles, the grain spills. Whatever she touches falls to ruin. The little girl said nothing. She is only... Fortune tilted her head, and the wreath of coins about her brow shimmered and flipped, changing from copper to coal, to silver to gold. Three? Then? Hmm, forgive me, I never know with you humans. Four, that said in her soft, dark voice, for that always knew. Fortune wrinkled her nose. Hmm, young, the proper age to spilling grain and breaking things. She's thirteen, the woman insisted, shoving the lantern high as if to drive her point home like a stubborn cow. Weak firelight caught on fortune's cone thread, on the wispy dam of dad's hood. Like me, that makes her the thirteen daughter of the thirteen daughter, her locks rotten to the core. You told your other children you'd take her into the woods to seek her fortune. The low god plucked the coin from her wreath and let it dance about her fingers, flashing copper and silver, gold and black. 
in truth, you were seeking me, that finished in her dark velvet voice, and woman's feature crumbled with shame. Yet, you have found us both. You have come far through the dark and through the forest to ask our favor. Asking a blessing of the Lady of Luck? Risking. No way to know what would be. Fortune face slipped between cruelty and sympathy as her coin slipped through quick fingers, flashing day and night, red and white. Death, on the other hand, did not stir. You know my gifts, and so you know, though there is plenty I can take, little can I give. But I will tell you, only one of you will go home. The woman drew a sharp breath. Fortune smiled, and her coin flashed like the sun and the snow, like shadow and like blood. You saw death in the wood. Did you think the way back would be easy? The woman said nothing. The flame in the lantern burned lower. Ask, that demanded. What will you have of us? The lantern shook in the woman's head. Her knuckles cracked with colors and cold. I, I want what's best for, for everyone. Choose, that demanded again. Which of you will return? The woman let go of her daughter. Fortune lifted the girl's chin. She found two eyes of sharpest black in a pale, freckled face to braids the color of lantern's flame tied off in bits of rag. What is your name? That asked as the woman turned and fled the crossroads, stealing away the last scrap of firelight. Vanya was the first thing I said to my godmothers. My name is Vanya. And then you can continue to read this book and to know what happened to Vanya Schmidt. Okay, my friends, now I will say you goodbye and I will see you in the library. Have a wonderful and interesting year. Bye-bye. <laughs>